Uh, my name is Graham Snyder. I'm an emergency physician and I'm the medical director for the Wake Med Center for Innovative Learning. What we do is primarily medical simulation to train nurses, paramedics, uh, EMT, really all levels of healthcare providers uh, how to improve their care with simulation. So several years ago, uh, I was serving as the associate program director for an emergency medicine training program at UNC. What we do is we take medical students who've graduated and then teach them to specialize in emergency medicine over three years. It's a, it's a challenging job because the interventions and procedures that we teach them uh, are high risk, high, high stakes interventions. And when working with real patients, the, there's really no room for error. What we did, well, the way we accomplished this was in a, a very safe and, and controlled manner, uh, taking the utmost care to make sure that patient safety was preserved. The, the lack that we had, that the problem that we had during training, is I could never really let the residents go. I could never let them go uh, care without being, being supervised for obvious reasons. What I wanted was a way to teach uh, the residents so that they could go throughout a training program, uh, take care of a patient, and maybe things could go wrong. And I wanted to find out whether they could fix those things when, when they went wrong. So what we did was we uh, found uh, some high fidelity uh, medical simulators, um, purchased them, and then throughout our curriculum, we would mix our curriculum. We would have lectures for a few days and then simulation for a few days. From there, we got more simulators and then realized that just training physicians was really just, just the tip of the iceberg. From there, we created a simulation center where we train really every, uh, every aspect of healthcare providers. Well, right now we are teaching uh, we're teaching courses for primarily um, North Carolina for uh, for our hospital and the surrounding hospitals that are affiliated with us. We have, however, expanded beyond that and served uh, taught programs which have elicited nearly all all 50 states. From here on out, what we what we will continue to do is go to places that don't have medical simulation, and show them the benefits uh, of simulation, uh, and help them to improve their care. In the scenario we did this morning, my role was 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 multiple. The um, one of my roles was to design the scenario and, and then and then serve uh, and then serve as the physician. The way I did that was by drawing on clinical experiences which I've had, which were both educationally valuable and, and uh, emotionally stressful. In this scenario particularly, there were a few things that I, I wanted to teach, and I used this scenario with, with physicians and medics um, of, of all varying levels. One of the roles is the simple role, which is teach the medical knowledge. Teach how you stabilize, resuscitate, diagnose, uh, and transfer the care of, of a critically ill trauma patient. The other role is more difficult. The other point of the case is more difficult. And that's to try to teach all levels of providers during a single scenario to speak up to sometimes the person who is uh, leading the scenario may not be the one that has a diagnosis and I want to teach nurses, paramedics, respiratory therapists to when they see a problem to if not take over the case but to interject their opinions and their their expertise to make sure that the best care gets taken care of. To do effective simulation, there's a tremendous amount of planning that has to has to go on. E e even the scenario that we that we perform today took took hours and hours of planning. The reason the reason for that is because the the most important thing to for me to have is medical realism. So if I'm teaching a case, that the easiest way to do it is to draw on real clinical experience. The first thing that we did was we remembered a case and then looked it up and then looked at what happens during a case medically. What makes a person deteriorate? What makes a person uh, get better? The, the, other, the other aspect is to identify what we're trying to teach. So from here I'm trying to teach communication uh, and trauma resuscitation. 
then uh, the next step is to create the, for lack of a better word, the, the Hollywood environment. It's very important that the learners believe that they're in the case. So as much as we can do to make the fit and feel, the equipment, the, the interactions realistic as possible, that's where the learning happens. In using high fidelity medical simulation, it's actually not that much of a challenge. These things talk, move, and breathe, and so when to to get the healthcare provider in the moment happens very rapidly, as, as you could see in that case. Uh, blood pressures are high, heart rates are, heart rates are fast. I'm talking about the providers, not the simulators. From a simulation, from a simulation aspect, I thought it, it went very well. There was, uh, there was great realism, everyone was uh, involved, had good buy-in, and the mistakes that were made were actually very important mistakes. To me, that's, that, that's a success. I want the, um, if there's a mistake, I want it to happen in simulation, and I want everyone to feel it and learn from it. Yes, uh, I, I made a mistake. The, uh, the mistake was number one, uh, I didn't make the diagnosis as fast as I could have. And number two, they were trying to tell me. Number three, they didn't tell me clearly enough. If, the, uh, if my nurse had said, doctor, he's hard to bag, and I think it's because he has a tension pneumothorax, that would have been enough. But instead, I just heard kind of hint and innuendo. He wanted to say he, he knew what the problem was, but he didn't want to step on my toes either. When patients are on the lines, I want my toes stepped on. As, as a teacher and uh, as a healthcare provider, and, and as a future patient, a, as we all are, the transformative power of, of simulation uh, can, cannot be understated. What we used to think of as a brand new doctor or a brand new nurse or a brand new paramedic is no longer. When a, a physician uh, for the first time puts someone on life support, it's not really their first time anymore. They've done it 50 times uh, in, in simulation and the, the early mistakes that everyone makes, they happen uh, on the robot. They happen where there's no consequence uh, at all. And that benefit uh, is enormous. I feel that if there's any opportunity for a person to train with simulation, they should take advantage of that because the, al the alternative uh, is training uh, on, on real humans. And although that can be accomplished safely, it cannot be accomplished anywhere as effectively as done with simulation.